So I'd like to show you an example now of calculating the torque. Um, and uh, I'm going to do this one by following along with my notes, uh, just because there's a lot of diagrams in this problem, which I have done neatly in the notes, so I won't try to scratch them out on the whiteboard. Um, so here's the problem shown on the screen, 12.3.3. Um, you're trying to loosen a bolt using a wrench. Uh, and this is a 10 centimeter long wrench and you apply 100 Newton force, um, seven centimeters away from the bolt, 70 degrees from the direction of the wrench. Um, and you wanna calculate how much torque are you applying with this force. So first we're gonna calculate it using the force component method. Then we'll calculate it using the lever arm method and you'll be able to see the two different methods and how they give you the same answer. Okay, so step one, we need a drawing of what's going on. Um, so I have my drawing here. I did kind of a fancy drawing here. If you're doing this yourself, you don't need a fancy drawing. You can just draw the wrench as a line or a rectangle or whatever you like. Um, the important things that you must get into the drawing, the two key features that the drawing has to have, it has to have where is the axis of rotation. So that's here, that's on the bolt. And then it has to have where is the force acting on the object. So the force is acting there. So those are the two key points on the diagram. Where is the axis and where is the force acting? Okay, um, so that's step one. Step two, we draw this circle, which the center of the circle needs to be on the axis of rotation. So notice again, the axis of rotation is there at the bolt. So I've drawn this circle here, something like this. So the center of that circle is the axis of rotation and the perimeter of that circle is the point that I highlighted earlier here. Um, where the force is actually acting on the object. So the force is acting on the object there. Um, so the cent circle has to pass through that point. Okay, so now I can actually visualize where the rotation is and um, how, you know, how it's, how the force is actually rotating. Okay, next step. Okay, um, I now want to visualize uh, the arm. I want to visualize the arm, which goes from the axis of rotation to where the force is acting. And I want to visualize the tangent to that line, which is going to be like that. And then I draw a right triangle. The hypotenuse of that triangle should be my force and the two sides of the triangle, one of them should be tangent to the circle, one of them should be parallel to the line connecting to the axis of rotation. So there is a right triangle that I'm using to break the force into components. So the force magnitude is gonna be the hypotenuse of the triangle and the tangential component of the force is the one that is tangent to the circle and the other component of the force would be the radial component of the force which is not important for this problem. So now I can see the um, triangle I'm using to calculate the magnitude. Now in this particular question this angle here was given as a 70 degree angle um, which means that in my right triangle I'm solving here this would be the 70 degree angle down here by alternate interior angles. And so this side is FT, this side is 100 Newton. So then I can see that I'm going to get FT is 100 sine of 70 or 100 cosine of 20, if you prefer. Um, Okay, so here I did it as cosine 20 in the notes. You can also do it as sine of 70. 
So that gives me a 94 Newton force component. And now remember L, so I have the force component and I have this distance here is my L. So that's the seven centimeters that was given. So I have here FT is 94. And I have L is seven centimeters. And that gives me a torque of 6.58 Newton meter. By the way, the unit of torque is Newton times meter. Um, SI unit. So that's the um, force component based method. So let me, let me sketch that out one more time. So the way we did it is draw this diagram, the circle you're visualizing is something like this, okay? L is this distance here the radius of that circle. The way you break the force into components is you want one side of the force to be tangent to the circle, one side to be radial to the circle. So you have your 100 Newton here, your FT here. And so you get torque is seven centimeters times 100 sine of 70 or 100 cosine of 20. Okay, so that's how you would approach this with the force component based method. Um, next up, how would you approach it using the lever arm based method? So in the lever arm based method, remember step, step one is still draw the diagram, no problem. Step two, we draw these two lines. So one line goes through the force, that's this one, that's the line of action, and line number two is perpendicular to the force and passes through here, the axis of rotation. So this line is basically defined by, you know, the force is acting way down here. So it doesn't connect to where the force is acting. What defines that line is you want it to be, you want these two lines to be perpendicular and you want it to pass through the axis of rotation there. So those two features define the line you're looking for. So then R perpendicular is this distance here from the axis to the line of action. Uh, now, in this problem here, that means you're gonna have to visualize a right triangle, which is shown on the bottom of the screen there. R perpendicular is this side, oops, Our perpendicular is this side of the triangle. Um, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is actually going to be this horizontal side. So the hypotenuse of the triangle is known to be seven centimeters. We're looking for our perpendicular. So it's going to be sine of 70. Um, that's the same sine of 70 that popped up in the force component based method. So in this, basically, in, in the other method, you have to do a breaking vector into components problem. In this method, you have to do a geometry problem to get the same information out. So we calculate our perpendicular as seven centimeters times sine of 70, and then we multiply that by 100 Newtons. And in both methods, you get there the same final answer, 6.58 Newton meter, and up here again, 6.58 Newton meter, either way. So that's, that's the two different ways of calculating torque.